Today's uh, webinar is on what's new with Autodesk Navisworks 2017 and BIM 360. Um, as Dave said, my name is Matt Stacconi. I'm a BIM specialist here at Microsoft Resources, which means I, uh, I train and support basically all the AEC products that uh, Autodesk uh, comes out with uh, now and in the future um, for the foreseeable future for the foreseeable future anyway. Um, but today's uh, class is, uh, or today's webinar is focusing on, uh, on what's new, or what are the new features in uh, Autodesk uh, Navisworks Manage 2017 as well as Simulate 2017. Um, for those of you who aren't really familiar with the Navisworks sort of family, there are actually three products. There's Navisworks Manage, uh, Navisworks Simulate, and Navisworks Freedom. Um, which doesn't get much of the press. Uh, Freedom is a free version of, of Navisworks that allows you to view Navisworks files. But in, a, in essence, what Navisworks does for the uninitiated is that it allows you to bring uh, models together, 3D uh, and 2D information from almost any application out there. So it supports Revit files, supports basically everything Autodesk you know, makes, uh, 3DS Max files, Revit, like I said, AutoCAD, um, you know, any other kind of 3D or 2D format that, that you're, that's out there. SketchUp, obviously, um, ARCHICAD, and uh, point cloud file formats, of which there are about 300 of. Um, so it's essentially a big Swiss army knife for BIM. And so the key features in Navisworks are that it allows you to bring the models together. You can review them. You can mark them up in 3D views. You can save uh, viewpoints, what they call viewpoints and snapshots and things like that. You can do easy walkthroughs. You can slice and dice the model and look at it um, you know, in any different, any different number of ways. It brings forward all the BIM information from your authoring application, be it Revit or ARCHICAD or, or whatever. Um, and you can you know, selectively filter things out. And, uh, and and look for things like clashes. Um, Navisworks Manage has a feature that's uh, specific to Manage in that you can essentially clash, do clash detection across the board and see where pipes are hitting steel and things like that. So that's the one separate. That's the one feature that separates Manage from Simulate. Simulate has all the features of Navisworks except for the the clash detection, which is why um, the Manage. Uh, application or the, the managed version is so popular. So with 2017, there are a few new features. Um, not a whole lot of features in 2017, to be honest. Um, what 2017 really does is extend the BIM 360 glue integration. And today's talk is really going to be focusing more on BIM 360 glue than anything else in the BIM 360 family, um, in that it, in the way that it uh, essentially uh, works within Navisworks and Revit and uh, and acts like on its own as a as a means of providing uh, real-time collaboration um, with everybody at, who people who do not need or want to have the design applications you know on their desktop so um, so we're going to be going into basically the the Navisworks the glue um, uh, workflows and things to look out for, and I'll, we'll we'll take that into uh, into consideration. So, a couple of uh, like I said, there's only four or five uh, new new features. Essentially, obviously, we're going to have Autodesk 2017 product integration. Um, we're going to have uh, we have faster model display, um, some productivity improvements in terms of how it works with Inglue and so on and so forth. Um, the the like I said, the integration with uh, BIM 360 Glue is paramount really with this release. One of the new features that it does is it actually supports uh, files that are hosted both in the United States and in Europe, which stretches its uh, utility across the globe. Um, the ability to save files from Navisworks back to 360, BIM 360 glue um, and, to, uh, and to work basically very efficiently between uh, the cloud-based BIM 360 glue application and, and Navisworks. Um, we have a, uh, a feature called shared views when you're working with BIM 360 models in that you can create views in Navisworks and have them instantly shared back to the BIM 360 model. So um, you can um, share those views with other people who are working within BIM 360 glue. Um, and then also uh, the views that you create adhere to object visibility, object overrides, and even section planes and section boxes as well. 
Uh, the speed in 2017 is uh, markedly faster, I think. It's, uh, we have faster synchronization with BIM 360. We have faster display, rotating models, very dense models of uh, thousands of polygons is, is really not a big problem in, uh, in Navisworks. And it's uh, lightning fast in streaming uh, models from BIM 360 glue. Some UI improvements, very, very minor UI improvements. Um, basically, so they tweaked a little bit in the Home tab and in the BIM 360 tab. But if you have Autodesk Navisworks Managed 2016, I think the changes are almost nothing. Um, but uh, in the same vein, the interface in Navisworks is uh, very uncluttered. It's very easy to, um, you know, to work out. It's uh, not a whole lot of commands to work with, so it's from an interface standpoint, it's, uh, it uses the ribbon interface quite well. Uh, and then we also have what we call click licensing in the 2017 product line where you can switch from a desktop license to a network license basically on the fly uh, as you need to. So if you change from one to the other, you don't have to uninstall the entire product and reinstall it to, uh, to make that licensing change. And then obviously we have the 2017 uh, product integration with all the Autodesk applications. We have uh, integration with uh, Autodesk Vault 2017 and Recap 2017. We have uh, new file exporters for 3ds Max 2017 um, as well as AutoCAD and uh, Civil 3D. Um, new file readers for Revit, new file readers for AutoCAD. So with anything you're working on with this release, you can easily work on it with um, within Navisworks. So if I just pop over to Navisworks really quickly, you can see um, the, let's get to it real quick. Oh, there we go. The interface is uh, essentially unchanged. Um, the BIM 360 um, tab here has our shared views um, new edition right here. And we can see them uh, over here. And one of the things about this is that, uh, you know, when you're working with Navisworks, you're either working with a locally generated uh, files from Revit or whatever, or you're pulling information down from BIM 360. Um, in BIM 360, there's a control panel here, right, for grabbing the models that you need right here. But if you know that you're going to be working in BIM 360, there is a way you can, on the desktop, there's actually two icons for Navisworks uh, that get installed. One is Navisworks Manage 2017 or, or Simulate 2017, whichever product you have, um, by itself. But then you also have one that's specifically for working with BIM 360. So that just basically, when it launches, it gives you a, uh, it, it basically just dives you right into right into 360. But you can get to it easily just either way. Um, with Navisworks, we have um, a couple of ways of working within Navisworks from our design applications. If I go over to Revit, I have a Revit file open here. It's basically a small medical office building. And I have a couple of exported or exporting views right here. One, one of the things that uh, I highly recommend if you're working with um, Revit, especially, and you're, and you're routinely making exports out to, uh, to Navisworks, is that you create a uh, special section in your project browser. Here I have a, a 3D view type called glue exports that are specifically set up for exporting out specific information. So for example, the architectural information right here uh, does not show any of my linked models. Um, it's only showing architectural information, no structural information. So we have essentially when I, uh, and then the electrical, mechanical, HVAC, and piping um, all do the same kind of thing. They all spit out basically very small subsets of the entire model, which is going to make it easier to work with either in Glue or in, uh, in Navisworks. So with this, what we have is the ability uh, to, oops, back up to here. There we go. Um, what we have is the ability to work within Revit and spit things out to Navisworks very cleanly. Uh, again, either uh, staying within, you know, on on your desktop or on your server, or spitting them up to the uh, um, BIM 360 service. So, what is BIM 360? When we talk about BIM 360, what we're really dealing with are um, the whole online cloud-based collaborative space that Autodesk has built over the past couple of years specifically for dealing with BIM data and BIM, 
BIM-based projects. So there are five uh, separate offerings that BIM 360 provides. The first one is BIM 360 Glue, which I've talked about. It's a cloud-based BIM management and collaboration product that uh, basically allows your entire project team, whether it's design, the design team or the construction team or both, to, uh, to get together in a common space. Uh, it's all online uh, and it streams the, streamlines product workflows because it allows you to, to mark up views, to uh, do clash detection, to do um, you know, design review and things like that and communicate these changes back and forth between your project members and they don't have to be anywhere close to you. They could be across the globe or they could be down the street or wherever, but because you're working with online data, you have this authoritative modeling uh, model data set that you're working with that um, everybody is you know, able to play in the same space at the same time. And it allows you to quickly uh, identify and resolve all the coordination issues that you have from the earliest parts of design all the way through, all the way through construction. BIM 360 field is essentially field management software for BIM environments where we combine uh, mobile co technologies at the, at the construction site. So um, you're, it's essentially for uh, your project managers, um, your construction managers, as well as the project superintendents who are out there in the field every day recording um, issues with safety, uh, you know, quality, um, and so on. And all that data is getting collected in real time using various mobile devices like iPads and iPhones and, and whatever else you have. And that information is being then sent, once you get back to the job trailer, that, that information can be easily sent to BIM 360 field and the dashboard interface provides the construction manager with a complete rundown of, okay, who forgot their, um, you know, who forgot their uh, hard hat today or, you know, where was a, a you know, a, a problem happening on the on the job site for whatever reason, so it allows project managers and, and construction professionals to uh, basically track all the things that are happening on the job site in real time. Okay, BIM 360 Docs is a new construction document management web service that ensures uh, your entire project team is using the correct version of your documents, plans, models, and so on. Um, what BIM 360 Docs does is allow you to save time, reduce the risk of having duplicate information or you know, uh, uh, mitigating, mitigating errors in um, construction projects with missing information and so on and so forth. We are going to be giving a, uh, another webinar in the future specifically on BIM 360 Docs because it is a new service and it, uh, it does have a lot of, um, does have a lot of uh, great things about it that will affect both design teams and construction teams. So it's not really, ju it's not just for construction teams, it's, it really is for, for everybody. Um, we also have on the construction side of things, we have BIM 360 Layout, which is essentially a cloud-based version of Autodesk's point layout product, which is, allows you to essentially connect the, the BIM models that you're working with to the field layout process. And for those of you who aren't um, familiar with the field layout process, what you can do on, on the job site is using data collectors and uh, um, essentially positioning devices, you can record points in the field from a Cartesian coordinate system or whatever coordinate system you're working with. And you can actually identify and locate points for laying out things like stud tracks and windows and doors as well as the hangers for your duct work and, and basically everything you're going to put out there in the field. So locating pipe sleeves and things like that is can be pulled, you know, the information can be pulled from the model, exported out to your um, to your data collectors and then the those points can be targeted in the in the field, so you can come up with um, uh, exact locations of where things are. So that essentially, you know, really when you're talking about laying out a job on the site, you really don't even need a, a set of plans with dimensions. If you have the model and you have point layout and you've laid out all your points, you just go out there and shoot the points out in the field, and you can lay out all the studs and everything else you need. So it's it's a uh, it's one step away from um, printing a building, but it's really close. It's uh, really great stuff. Um, I've talked to a lot of contractors over the years and taught them um, point layout, and uh, when they see what it can do, they're, they're 
they, you know, their jaws drop. Uh, BIM 360 Plan is another new, um, a new product in the BIM 360 family. It's basically um, web-enabled um, um, project management, project scheduling, um, builds more reliable project work plans, and uh, um, reduces waste associated with overproduction, excess inventory, and, and task reworks. So let's talk about BIM 360 Glue. Um, the shortcut 30-second answer to what BIM 360 Glue is, is, is essentially it's cloud-based Navisworks. Um, Navisworks in the cloud is what they call it. So, but it's, it's obvi obviously a lot different from Navisworks, but the basic structure of how it works is essentially the same. So what we, it allows us to do is to simplify the multidiscipline model coordination and class detection tasks that everyone has to go through because everyone can submit models to BIM 360 Glue and then look at it online in, a, in an environment that allows you to rotate the model, walk through it, section it, do everything you need to do, um, as well as uh, perform class detection and, uh, and markups. Okay? So it, essentially, it's the idea behind BIM 360 Glue is to improve the communication and collaboration from the earliest points of design all the way through construction. And and as well as to communicate uh, the design issues with your project stakeholders who don't know anything about design software. They're not going to put management on their desks or anything like that, but you can send information to them lightning quick through mobile devices like an iPad uh, and so on and so forth. The nice thing about it is that it uh, uh, it's tightly integrated with both Revit and Navisworks, as we're going to see in, a, in just a few minutes here. So. BIM 360 Glue is available in three flavors. Okay, there's the Glue Desktop app, which you can download from the link you see on the uh, on the screen here. It's an Internet Explorer-based application. Um, it's still web-based, but it's in its own uh, application. And overall, it provides the best interaction with your Glue models. Um, there's also the uh, the web. Uh, the Glue website you can go to. So you sign into BIM 360 Glue and you can access it through your browser. What I found in my testing is that Internet Explorer is the browser of choice with uh, with a BIM 360 um, Glue. I've used Chrome on it, but I had to install a plugin to make it work, and it was kind of a kind of a, a wishwashy uh, kind of a thing. But um, Internet Explorer seems to work pretty well. Um, there's also uh, a mobile app. There's an iOS app for uh, for iPad. It's only right now. It's only for the iPad. It doesn't work on the iPhone, and there's no Android version available. But given the um, popularity of iPads, especially the iPad Pro with its bigger screen, um, being able to view the model in 3D and in 2D and uh, and walk through it is uh, is really a cool thing on the uh, on a tablet. So, how do you get started with BIM 360 Glue? What's this all? What's this all about? Well, the first thing is you acquire a BIM 360 Glue account, and that's done through us. Or, um, and uh, when you do this, you can go to the BIM 360 uh, website, and you can sign in, and go to the BIM 360 account administrator. Or this, you're going to get this uh, this little dialog box that has basically the four. Um, you know, four, four or five products that you're uh, enabled to use. And so once you do that, you're going to select the cloud site which hosts the project because that's what you get when you get a BIM 360 Glue account is you get a host website that, uh, that hosts all your project data. Um, and then the first thing you're going to do is you're going to create a new project. Then you're going to create uh, companies and then you're going to add members who work for those companies and so essentially you're going to build essentially the infrastructure for this uh, for this project now when you create your members um, they are, you're going to sign them up using their uh, email address and they are going to be sent an invitation to get to the to the site so basically you're going to build the population that's going to be interacting with that particular project a um, couple of administrative notes here um, as a site administrator, you can create any number of projects on the host site. There's no limitation there. Uh, each project can have different members and companies. Okay. Um, within that project, members can be assigned different access rights. So, you know, a person could be an administrator at the entire site level or a project level, or they could be a normal user or a, a user with limited rights, and so on and so forth. Um, and it's easy to notify. Uh, project members as events happen through the project. So when you upload new models or you publish new uh, marked up views or new clash tests or run or things like that, uh, uh, BIM 
BIM 360 Glue can automatically notify the people that you want to notify, or you can tell it to notify just you know certain people at certain times. Um, so let's look at an example workflow uh, working in Revit. Okay, we can work in Revit, or we can work in Navisworks Manage, or or simulate. Uh, we're going to choose to work in Revit for now. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to glue or upload. That's what they, they call it. They call it glue. Um, you're going to upload your models from Revit using basically the BIM 360 add-in, which in 2017 pretty much comes with the product and is installed pretty much automatically. Um, you're going to select the views you want to upload, um, select some options, glue it, as they say in the, uh, in the trade, and then automatically uh, other users are notified um, when the new models are, are uploaded. Um, the nice thing about this is that you don't have to leave Revit to do this. You can be in the middle of Revit as soon as you are in a position where you can go ahead and send a new model up. Go ahead and just glue it. It can replace the old model in place and um, everyone can be notified uh, when that happens. Um, that built-in notification feature greatly improves efficiency and accountability because as Anyone knows who works in a Revit environment where you're trading models back and forth. You know, somebody says, "Well, I didn't get this latest model, or I don't have, I don't have that latest and greatest piece of information, or whatever." Because everything's going into one place, and everyone's working off the same data set. Everyone has the latest and greatest thing, so no one can really, you know, uh, you know, sort of shirk their responsibilities on that uh, on that front. Um, then once you get the models up there in Glue what you're going to do is in the Glue app or on the web or whatever, you're going to uh, choose the project and then you're going to merge the different models together. So typically speaking, what we do is we have a model or we have several models for the different disciplines. So simplistically speaking, we'd have an architectural model, uh, maybe a mechanical ductwork model, a piping model, uh, an electrical model, and a structural model. Um, having those separate models allows us to uh, ease more easily sort of turn on and off whole disciplines all at one time, right? So we can turn off all the piping all at once just by selecting that one model and just turning it off. So it makes it much easier to work with when you simplify the things that are getting exported all at one time. Um, and this is why I recommend when you're in Revit, you create these glue export views that are specific for that discipline and have only those things that you want to have turned on. Uh, turned on. So let me go back into Revit real quick. And so we have our discipline specific uh, views right here and each one of these is uh, basically tuned to what uh, what the model is all about so if I come up here to the add-in and go to glue when I go to glue here um, first of all it's going to ask me to uh, select the views to add and I'm going to use this uh, MRC glue site uh, site. This is my site, and then this 56750 medical office building is my project. So that was created uh, before. So I'm going to go ahead and say Add Views. This is going to give me all the list of views in the project here. And you can see as I scroll down here, there's where my exports uh, views are. And I'm going to go ahead and select my structural, mechanical, piping, architectural, and electrical. Okay. So what's going to happen is that when I hit OK here. They're going to show up here. Now they have a type. They can be either exported as DWFs or NWCs. I'm going to choose NWC. If I want to, I could add them to a folder. I'm going to basically use this models folder here. That's going to be fine. Um, and then I have a last glued status right here. So if you're updating a model, it's going to show you what the last glued status was. Under more options, this is an important one because right here, this is going to include some information here that you want to make sure that you uh, that you check. First of all, I want to make sure that I'm using shared coordinates. And now this is an important point when you're exporting project models out. And uh, one of the things that uh, you do, or you should do in projects, is use a shared coordinate system, which allows everyone to have basically a common 0, 0 origin point. And what that allows uh, Revit and Navisworks to do, and Glue as well, is to understand how all the models are going to fit together. So they fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. If you don't, what ha if you don't do this, what happens is that models can be using different orientations in terms of true north or whatever and when they come together you know you could have one model that's pointing off at 35 degrees or whatever and or at the wrong elevation and trying to align those things is going to be much more difficult in in glue or in Navisworks so if you're if your shared coordinate system is put together well and you use shared coordinates for your positioning system when you export things out you're going to be fine um, one of the things here I'm going to do is because I'm working in my architectural file 
uh, I have include linked files checked here. That means when I export these things out, some of those views are of just of the linked file, the linked uh, mechanical uh, MEP model, for example, or the linked structural model. The, I, I am going to uncheck include rooms because what will happen otherwise is it will include the room volume as a it's basically a solid mass. And if you if you do include rooms, you're going to get uh, basically hundreds of additional clashes as you go through the process of doing clash detection. So I'm just going to eliminate those. And I'm not going to include construction parts, but if you were doing construction modeling where you're separating things out into, you know, fine layers of uh, things like wall layers and things like that, then you would include those. If I go ahead and hit glue it, I'm not going to do this right now because I've already done this, but if I go ahead and glue it, it will send everything up to uh, the glue site and then give me a notification when it's done. Uh, I've already done this to save some time here, although it doesn't take very much time. Uh, and let me go to my, uh, my glue site here. Okay, so I am in BIM 360 glue here. This is the, the application that I download. Here is my, um, here's my project. And, oh, you know what? I did not actually add these in. Let me go back to this and let me do this again. Let me just go to this. I'm sorry, I thought I added those in already. Let's go down to here. This doesn't take long. Hopefully. Uh, okay, I've got those guys. Let's go ahead and that's good. Options are good here. Let's go ahead and glue it. So what it's going to do is basically take each of these views, which is its own 3D view, and create a separate uh, MWC file, which is the file of Navisworks and throw that up to the cloud and put those together. Okay. Now while that's happening, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop back over into Navisworks and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing here. What I have here is I have these same files basically um, uh, separated out into architectural ducts, electrical, piping, and structural as well. I have these NWC files here and I've brought those together and put them into this medical office building file. So I'm just going to open this medical office building file up and here we have the project as we had before and I have some things turned off. Let me turn this back on. Let me turn this back on so we have the model. So this is essentially all six of those files, I believe it was yeah, one, two, three, four, five, uh, five models all put together, and I can just you know rotate around this. If you've never seen Navisworks, this is basically what it looks like, and I can get that started. So it's telling me here that the models are being glued. Let, let me know when this is complete. That's fine. And what that does is now Revit is now free. I can go ahead and do what I need to do, and it's uh, basically uploading those things in the background. Okay. So that's working there. Let me go ahead back into my presentation. Okay, so what's going to happen is this is going to probably pop up a little bit later and tell me that everything's up in 360 glue, and then we can go ahead and uh, and work on them. Now, what I talked about before previously was, you know, we have the ability to um, set up our project base points and origins and things like that in Revit and that's how I strongly recommend that you do this because if you have to do this in either BIM 360 Glue or Navisworks to physically move uh, models into place, there's a good chance you're not going to get it exactly right or the orientation is going to be off slightly and that's going to throw off things like clash detection and all kinds of stuff. So get your, uh, get your base points and your share coordinate system set up in Revit before you export and using the share coordinate positioning when you uh, export those models out and bring them together in Navisworks or in BIM 360 Glue, you'll get it you know, exactly right every single time. The one thing though is that if you do have to do the merge and align in BIM 360 or in Navisworks, you only have to do it once because once you position those models together, uh, Revit or Navisworks and BIM 360 keep those uh, positions all the time. As you make changes to the model and you update them, they'll basically update in place so they don't move around and, and you won't have to sort of refit everything um, time and time again. Uh, let's see what we're doing here with BIM 360. Okay. Okay, it looks like we've got some things happening here. So as we look at this, um, you can see that there are basically three buttons here on the left-hand side, 
the very top is basically the top level view of everything. Um, and then we have a merged models uh, button here, and then we also have the, the models that make up that merged model. So at the very top level here, uh, we have our models that are basically coming in place. We have, looks like um, these are still, these are still probably cooking a little bit here, but they should be done shortly. Let's make sure that they're not hiding away from me somewhere. Okay, that's fine. All right. So what I'm going to do is, while that's working, I'm going to do um, some work here in Navisworks. So what I have here is uh, my Navisworks um, project that I local, loaded from local files. Okay. Now, one of the things we can do, like I said, in Navisworks is we can produce clash detections. And so if I'm interested to see where, for example, my piping is clashing with my structure, what I can do is set up a clash test. In other words, I can clash, say, the, it'll take the, the geometric information included in the pipes, say, and, and with the structure, put them together and find out where they hit each other. So if I bring up the clash detective right here, you can see where I have a clash test that I've already set up that is essentially um, my piping right here. And as I look at my piping, it'll uh, show this in different levels of detail. So it goes from the hierarchy is the, the file itself, and then we look at levels. So we have lower floor, lower level ground floor and second floor, and then we have the individual things that are in these uh, these different levels. So we have uh, a bunch of pipes and a bunch of um, plumbing fixtures and things like that. And what's interesting about this is I want to make sure that when I'm looking at this, that this piping model doesn't include stuff outside of it. So in other words, what I can do is I can basically select this whole piping model and clash it against the structure. And uh, I want to make sure that when I do that, if I'm going to go ahead and do that route, I want to make sure that there are no um, additional walls or you know things like that in this uh, in this thing. In other words, I want to make sure that my clash test is correct so that I don't get false positives. Because having to track down 3,000 false positives when you only have 20 clashes is a is a real uh, is a is a real pain. Now on the structural side, what I could do is I could just go ahead and select the structural file. Okay, but if I look in the structural file, you're going to see that I have structural columns, I have structural foundations, and I have walls. Okay, well I don't really want to deal with clashing against the walls. I mean I might want to if I have to. Um, find out where I have to sleeve something or something like that. But for the most part, I'm going to kind of assume that walls are, um, you know, easily penetrable. Okay, I'm not going to worry about them too much. But I am going to be worrying about structural framing and structural columns. I'm not going to worry too much about structural foundations at this point either. So I do need a way to basically take this file and just take out all the stuff that I don't want to clash. In other words, I do want to clash columns and framing. I don't want to clash floors. I don't want to clash walls. So in this case, what we do in Navisworks is we use something called a selection set. And what a selection set is, is essentially a, let me zoom out here for a second, is a way of isolating out certain things. So what I'm going to do here in my view right now is I'm going to go over into my selection tree. I'm going to right click on my architectural file. I'm going to hide that. And I'm also going to hide, um, actually we'll leave, leave this alone. Okay, that's actually pretty good. So you can see where I can, I have the duct work and the HVAC work and the piping and everything else like that inside my model here. But really what I want to do is I want to clash test, in this case I want to clash test my piping, just my piping, and my structural steel. Okay. So to do that, what I can do is set up what they call a, a, a selection set. And that's done actually down here in the find items um, property here. If I look at uh, um, these properties right here, what I can do is set up a basically a query of the model to look for everything that is um, structural framing and structural columns. And what ends up happening is if I go ahead and click on this, you'll see that all of the just the structural components, the structural components I'm interested in are being highlighted in green. So I have my beams, my columns, my joists, uh, but not my foundations, not my floors, not my walls, and so on and so forth. So this is really nice because this allows us to set up a selection or a clash test of just piping and just, if I go over here to sets, just uh, structural framing. Okay, So I have this set up as a, as a, um, as a new clash test. 
Okay. If I did, if I delete that class test and I want to make a new one, it's very easy. I just hit Add Test, click on, you know, something from uh, column A, and then something from column B, and put them together, and it's a cage match, right? So I go ahead and I'm going to call this. Uh, let's call this uh, piping versus st uh, structure. Okay. And then down here at the bottom, I have um, ways of clashing things. So the type of tech clash that I have is a hard clash. Basically, two things are actually physically intersecting with each other, or a clearance, or a duplicate, or something like that. I'm going to go ahead and say it's a hard clash. I'm going to go ahead and run the test, and I get 17 clashes. Okay. Now, what's nice about this in Navisworks is that I click on a, a clash here. It basically highlights the clash and takes me right to where it is. So it shows me both both the uh, objects in green and red are the things that are being clashed here. And in my report, right here, it says uh, what two things are being uh, are being clashed. I can set up rules as well. I can uh, isolate things from not clashing if I want to. Um, but basically, the, the results basically tell you what's, what's going on. So I have um, the status of the clash can be either set to be new, active, reviewed, approved, or resolved. Okay, as you go through clash tests and you um, do the same clash test over again, if you've moved these things, um, those two things are no longer clashing, and the clash detective will say that those that is uh, resolved. It'll resolve itself. Okay, and they are, they are color coded as well, so uh, you'll see these. And it also tells you what level it's on and where the grid, uh, the nearest grid intersection is. Uh, when it was found, and then we can also, with each clash, we can say, um, you know, uh, approved by, uh, you know, whether it's approved or not approved, who's it's assigned to, so I can give it an assignment, uh, and then what the distance is of the clash. So if I look at something like this, I've got some pretty severe clashes in the two-foot range, and then I've got one clash here that's in the, you know, quarter-inch range, so that may or may not result in a physical clash once it gets built, but it is something to, uh, to be... Uh, to be worried about. Okay, so I have 17 clashes here through Navisworks Manage proper. Okay, so let's see what's happening here on the uh, BIM 360 side. Up oh, there we go. Models are successfully glued. Let's go ahead into our BIM 360 uh, app here. So what we have here are the models that we have here. Now what I need to do here is merge these. Okay, that's what this merge model section is. So to merge them, all I have to do here is go to New Merged Model. And then I'm going to get the models that I want to merge, and I'm going to merge all of the files, the, the same five uh, files that I had in Navisworks. And I'll give this a, um, a, a, a merged model name, so I'll call this a Medical Office Building. And I'll go ahead and say Merge Models. And here I am. Okay. And it's loading these things in. There we go. And I can navigate around in inside of the uh, BIM 360 app just like I can in Navisworks. I'm holding the uh, shift key down with my middle mouse button and I'm pivoting around the scene. Uh, if I want to select something here like this thing, uh, this roof right here, if I do the same orbit, I'm orbiting around that object so it allows me to pivot, select my pivot point pretty easily. I'm showing the grids here. If I see them in green, that means they're below my view, but if I orbit down like this, you can see it will turn red. Those are the grids that are above. Okay. Um, on the left-hand side, I have basically the elements that are in the model. Okay. So if I select on my structural, um, actually let me select on the architectural model here, and you'll see it all highlights right here. I can turn it off just like I could in regular Navisworks. Um, you can turn off my electrical. Uh, let's see, I turn off my um, mechanical as well. And I'm left with essentially just, oops, sorry, let me turn those off. There we go. So now I'm left with essentially the same thing I saw in uh, in Navisworks. So I just have my plumbing, my piping, and my structure here. Now let's see if we want to do a clash test with this. It's actually fairly simple. Um, it's not perhaps as involved as it is in Navisworks. But what I can do is on the left-hand side, I have a very simple control panel here. So I can go ahead and do things like I can measure things, just like I can in Navisworks. I can do, say, a point-to-point -point measurement. Um, and you'll get a little marker here. As it turns to an X, it's getting a vertex. And I can, say, go to there to there, and it tells me it's uh, you know 35, 32 feet 8 and a half. 
um, so on and so forth. I can measure shortest distance between two objects. So if I go, say, shortest distance here, oops, let me clear that out. And I can uh, measure angles and areas and so on and so forth pretty easily. Okay, let's look at um, views. Uh, is I want to uh, look at this, and I'll I'll show you this in Navisworks a little bit later. Um, but what I can do is I can set up uh, new views here. So I'm going to I'll call this um, uh, let's see, Axo say southwest corner, and I can actually tell it who has access to this view. So I can save that view, and I can go around to this view, like over to here, and do the same thing, make a new view and call it AXO uh, southeast corner, do the same thing. And then it makes it easy, um, oops, to uh, share these with other people as well. Uh, I can also add a section to this view and as I move this plane up and down it automatically sections out the view. I can rotate the plane if I want to I can so I can section it basically any way uh, I really want to here. Cancel that. So all you have to do is basically just click on each view, and you can go to exactly where you want. Okay. So that's very simple. Uh, if I come down here to clashes, so let's see. It says clashes have not been analyzed. Let's say find clashes. Now in this case, what I need to do here is I don't have the ability to actually create selection sets per se, but what I'm going to do here is in the, on the left hand side, I'm going to go ahead and click my piping model, which I know is fine, and on the right hand side, where I have my structural model here, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to look at uh, things in this hierarchy. The hierarchy here is a little bit easier to work with, so I'm going to look for columns and structural foundations on the, at the top of footing level, uh, same thing with the lower level. Um, I don't want to wor worry about floors or walls. So I'll go ahead and basically just select the bits and pieces that I need. I'm only going to look for structural framing and structural columns. Don't worry about doors. There we go. So once I have these things selected, I'm going to go ahead and do, uh, I'll name it, so I'll say, same, name it the same thing, piping versus structural steel. Okay. And let's see if I find clashes. Now, I did the same clash test in Navisworks, and I came up with 17. Let's see what happens when I do when I do this. And it found found 19. So somewhere along there, there are two extras, but that could possibly be a, a false positive, something that maybe I missed. But essentially, what's this? It's this, it's doing the same thing. We can go ahead and zoom in on the clashes, um, and if I want to, we can. Uh, notate each of these clashes. We can um, put a comment on it and uh, say, you know, move pipe, oops, if I can spell correctly, move pipe 12 inches to north, something like that, and that puts a note on that. Um, I can go ahead and add a markup to it. So if I enable the markup tool here, I'll just use a freehand squiggly line around that, maybe put a piece of text right there. Um, Move pipe 12 inch south, something like that. And I'll hit return. That will save that. Um, let me go ahead and save that. So that saves that markup right there. Okay. And then I can send a notification to somebody. Now, in real life, you'd have a ton of people here in your project member list. I only have me, so uh, I'm not going to send it to myself, but I could if I wanted to. Um, hey, check this out. Send it. And what will happen is I'll get an email um, about this particular clash in my, uh, in my inbox. So let me go ahead and uh, sort of get out of this for a little bit. Let me go back into Navisworks and let me go ahead and close this out. Let me just save this and I'll save this uh, as my medical office building right here and I'll say um, open 
Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open a file, and instead of opening it from local, you know, appending or making a new file or opening an NWF that I have locally, I'm going to open the same project that we just did in Glue. I'm going to open it here from BIM 360. So I can say open from BIM 360. I'm going to go ahead and select my server. Is it in the United States? This is that new feature I was talking about earlier. And it'll go out and find my account. There's my medical office building. I'll go ahead and that's my merge model. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. Uh, can't resolve external reference. This is basically a JPEG that was uh, material. So I'm going to say ignore all those. That's no problem. So it's loading all those files from Glue back into Navisworks. So now my new scene is essentially the same one I had uh, up, in, up in Glue. So what I can do here while I'm working in this, let me go ahead and change my background to a horizon. Okay, there we go. A little bit easier on the eyes. Um, what I can do here is do some model review uh, here in Navisworks, but I'm using the models from BIM 360. So, for example, if I look at this entryway right here, um, and I look at, say, this surround right here, which looks a little bit out of control, what I can do here is I can bring up my shared views, and I have this over here. And you can see where actually those two views that I created before are now listed right here. So those views came across because I created them in BIM 360 as shared views. If you remember when I was over here, these are under the shared views folder, but I could also create shares under this my views folder right here as well. Okay. So if I want to create a view in Navisworks, all I really have to do is under my shared views, let's go ahead and create a new view. Let's say do a new view right, say here. Say new view here, and I'll call this, uh, say, northwest corner. I hit save, and so now that's a view right there. And so what happens now is if I go ahead and save this, it's saving the file back to 360. Okay, so if I go back into BIM 360 here, and I go to refresh my models, I should see there it is right there. Okay, so what this allows me to do is I can be communicating basically from my Navisworks project to somebody who doesn't have Navisworks pretty much in real time. And as I make markups and as I do things like that, um, other people can see them and I can send markups to, uh, to other people pretty, pretty easily. Okay. Okay. Terrible PowerPoint skills. I apologize. There we go. Okay. So essentially the workflows that we're going to be um, talking with as I, as I close out this, uh, this session is essentially we have um, the ability to mark up models. We can, as I, as I showed you before, we can easily uh, 3D orbit, uh, walk through and section those, that design, um, select the components. You can actually see the view properties, uh, mark up those designs fairly simple, publish those views uh, and markups and provide feedback, and then select the members to notify and, uh, and basically hit the send button and, and send, the, uh, send the comments off to people. The great thing about this, though, is that all the models live in the cloud. And when they live in the cloud and people submit the models straight to the cloud without any fuss with, uh, you know, some sort of third party, you know, um, you know, mailbox or something like that. And, you know, you don't know who downloaded what at what time. You basically have that central source of, source of truth, which is really invaluable for making sure that everyone's communicating and everything's up on, on the level. Um, the easy ability to make markups and save views with those markups is just incredible. Um, and so you're really using the model to mark up the design rather than a bunch of paper. Uh, and things can get lost very simply. Um, again, updating the models is, is, again, very simple. All you really have to do is make that change in Navisworks uh, or in, actually in Revit. Let's go back to Revit real quick. And actually, I'd have to go to my uh, to my models. But what I could do is I could make a change. Um, say if I took this wall and you know brought it up to here for whatever reason. Once I make this change here, and I go back into that 3D view that I have for this, and I right click on this, and I say, or I go up here to glue, and I just say glue my architectural model back up again. I'll just go ahead and remove all these. Um, glue it and what will happen is the architectural model will be uh, exported and updated in M360 glue and you should see this wall uh, magically get larger. 
So as you're working through your designs, as you modify, as you find those clashes for the piping and you move the piping out of the way and you re-export those files and those clashes go away, you're, you're going to go ahead and see that. So it's going to say, the up, let's update the model. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay. It's going to let me know when it's done. While I'm sitting here waiting for this, let's go ahead and turn on that architectural model just so we can see it. You can see that it has a, uh, a, uh, a button there that says that basically it could be out of date. And I think oops, something happened with the, uh, I think I jumped the gun too soon on that. But what would happen normally is that that would just go ahead and, and fix itself. Okay, and lastly, um, what BIM 360 Glue allows you to do is essentially share all this information with your stakeholders who are not going to be BIM savvy at all. Um, they probably have an iPad available to them somehow, or, a, or at least a laptop. Um, but the ability to uh, basically communicate with them uh, in real time and to, uh, to uh, see these things um, and be part of that communication process is just invaluable. Um, uh, the fact that um, you know, your project managers can do all the heavy lifting in terms of uh, checking clashes and, and uh, you know, reading notices and keeping track of things. And then it's easy just to, to pop this stuff off to, uh, to the owner, to the tenant, to the, the people in charge of writing your check uh, to make sure that everyone's on the, uh, on the level with everything. Um, <clears throat> so with BIM 360 Glue, you might say, well, why, do you, why would you use Navisworks if BIM 360 Glue can do clash detection, which is really the heavy, the heavy you know, uh, lifter of the Navisworks family. Well, um, Navisworks actually has a lot more functionality than glue when it comes to things like creating selection sets and setting visual styles. Uh, it has built-in rendering. It has the Timeliner 4D um, animator uh, where you can basically, you know, tie your schedule to the actual elements and see the thing happening and track, uh, track events on site as they're supposed to happen. Uh, it also has 2D and 3D quantification, which glue does not have. So, you know, the Navisworks plays a central part uh, for most construction projects nowadays. Um, but the fact that you have the BIM 360 glue environment that allows you to upload and, uh, and pull down information from that central repository source means that everybody's still on the level with, uh, with everything all at one time.